Father, we thank you for the privilege and the opportunity to come before you. I'm so grateful for every person present. I pray that you take these next few moments and speak to us, Lord. Allow your truth to prevail, your name to be exalted, and for you to get all of the glory and all of the honor. In the precious and mighty name of the Lord Jesus, I pray for unsaved, backslidden, unsure, unchurched persons that they might hear your truth and let your name get all of the glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, you can be seated. I was um, on a plane. I was on a trip recently, and um, when I got on the plane, the moment I walked on the plane, the, one of the stewardesses jumped up and gr gave me a hug and said, Pastor Jenkins. <laughs> uh, and she's a member. And she began to reel off to me those six doctrinal truths that I had been teaching for the past several weeks. So it made me feel as though somebody's listening. So I'm appreciative for that and I'm thankful. And then somebody said to me last week, now that you've gone through those six elementary principles, Pastor, what's next? I'm glad you asked the question because I want to begin today by telling you what's next. And I want you to open your Bibles to John chapter 3. And this is the next part I want to talk about. I want to talk about John chapter 3. And what I want to walk you through today, I'll give you the title of this message in a few minutes. I'm not going to give it to you right now, but I'll give it to you in a few minutes. I want to walk through this very familiar and very significant passage of scripture. If you don't ever hear me talk, I want you to listen to me today. Look at the, if the person sitting next to you is asleep, wake them up, slap them upside their head. I anoint you with the gift and the calling to wake some person up, up out of their sleeping stupor. Yeah, smack them upside the head and said, the pastor told me to smack you. Because this is a very, very important message I'm going to give you today. It's very important. This is, and this is what's next. Chapter 3 of the Gospel of John, the Gospel according to John. Give me a few moments to walk through the first several verses, and then I'm going to give you, uh, I'm going to go to another passage of Scripture. Here's what it says. There was a man, verse 1, there was a man of the Pharisees, Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. Here's one of the religious leaders of his day named Nicodemus. Verse 2, this man came to Jesus by night. He, he came to Jesus by night because he was afraid to go in the day. He didn't want nobody to know, so he's sneaking up on Jesus and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these things that you do unless God is with him. Now let me put this in the, today's vernacular. Here's what Nicodemus sneaks to Jesus and says, Rev, you can only do the stuff you're doing if God is with you. We've seen you do miracles. We've seen you do the spectacular. And you can only do those things if God is with you. That's what, he, that's what he says to him. And that's very true, very powerful, very profound. Verse 3, but here's how Jesus answers his question. Jesus answered and said to him, and actually Nicodemus didn't ask the question, he made a statement, but Jesus responded to him, it says in verse 3, Jesus answered him and said to him, most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Stick a pin right there. He says, unless a person has had a born again experience, he can't even see the kingdom of God. He can't comprehend the kingdom of God. He can't understand the kingdom of God. That's a very important thing because a lot of people don't understand what this born again thing is. It's a very important deal. And it's really the question that I have to ask you today. You want to know what's next? I want to ask you the question, have you done what just says? Have you been born again? Have you had a born again experience? See, a lot of people join church, but they never got born again. When I grew up, I joined church. I, I, I joined church because I was a sunbeam. I was a little kid, sunbeam singing in the choir, a little kid, and I saw my peers 
taking communion. Kids in the choir, Sunbeam Choir, Children's Choir, right here at First Baptist Church Glen Arden, taking communion. In every communion service, I look over at my mother to see if I can take communion, and my mother said, not until I join church. And I was a little pissed off about it. Because <laughs> I saw my peers drinking the communion, sticking their tongue all down in the glass. And I wanted to find out what the communion tasted like. So one Sunday, I joined church. I didn't get saved. I didn't get born again. I simply joined church so I could check out the communion. But Jesus says you can't even, you cannot see the kingdom of God unless you have had a born again experience. That born again experience means that you are regenerated. Somebody said regeneration, that's what we call it. When you get regenerated, your life changes, your perspective changes, your passions change, your heart changes, your view of the world changes, the view of your life changes. Something in your heart changes. Your eyes get opened up. You see life differently. You don't look at life the way you used to look at it. Go on and preach, Pastor. You don't, look at the, you don't look at the world the same way you used to look at it. When you get born again, something changes in your heart, in your life, in your mind, in your thinking. Something changes. Verse 4, Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? So here's Nicodemus is approaching Jesus' answer from a carnal vantage point, from a flesh standpoint. He said, you, you, I got to be born again. How can a man, after he's old, get born again? Does he, does, does he go back into his mother's womb? womb and come back out again? And, and that's, that's what he's answered. How, how can he enter a second time into this, his mother's womb and be born? That's verse 4, Nicodemus. Jesus answered, verse 5, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Stick a pin right there. There's a second place I want you to stick a pin. Are y'all with me? Yes. Jesus said, let me read this to you, unless one is born of water, that means being physically born. See, when a woman has a baby, when she's having a baby, that baby is born in a water sack around. She has a water sack. The baby's in a water sack. And when it's time for the baby to be born, the, the baby breaks forth the water sack, and that's when the baby's born. Is that right, ladies? I ain't never had no baby. Thank you, Jesus. Every time my wife gave birth to my child, one of our children, I said, thank the Lord I was born a man. Come on, come on. I couldn't handle what women go through. I couldn't take the pain. I couldn't take the burden of it. I, it's, I salute y'all, y'all women, mothers. So when Jesus says, unless you're born of the water, he's talking about physically being born. Now, some religions have taught, some denominations have taught that this is referring to baptism. That you got to be born of the water, meaning baptism and the spirit. That's not what he's talking about. And I'm going to tell you, I'm sure in a minute why I know that that's the fact. He's not talking about water baptism. Because matter of fact, people have been, people, slow down, slow down, Pastor. It, you can, be, you can be baptized, but if you're not born again, you go down a dry center, come up a wet center. And how do I know that he's talking about uh, something of the flesh? Verse 6, he says, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. So when, when you uh, are born, Jesus is saying, you... you you, when I, Jesus is saying, when I, want you to, when I talk about being born again, you got to be born not only of the flesh, not only being born of the water sack, you also have to have something happen in you, in your heart, that's done by the Spirit of God. The power of what the presence of God does is transforms your 
life? And that's the question I want to ask you today as I'm entering into this dialogue is have you been born again? Have you had a regener? Have you been regenerated? Has, has your heart changed? Did something happen? Let me tell you something. When you have an encounter with Jesus, when God comes into your heart and changes, you know that something has changed. I don't think the way I used to think. I don't act the way I used to act. I don't want the things I used to want. My life changes. Somebody say something changes when you get born again. And that's the question that everybody has to ask themselves today. Have I been born again? Have I been transformed? I, at some juncture in my life, even though I joined church as a kid to get back to so I could take the communion, and I, and I went, I remember when I got baptized that time when I was a kid, I, I, I moved into the water, the water was cold, chilled my body, but not my soul. The water was cold. It was, it was just a physical act that I did, but I had not been born again. I had not accepted Jesus in my life. He had not changed my heart. And that's the ultimate question that everybody has to ask themselves. Nobody can answer this but you. Look at the person sitting next to you. Look at them, eyeball to eyeball. Say, can nobody answer this but you? Have you been born again? Go ahead, ask them. Have you been born again? Have you been regenerated? Have you had a difference in your life, in your heart, in your mind? See, people join church for all kinds of reasons. People join church for a lot of, all, many for the wrong reasons. People join church for all kinds of reasons. Some, some of them join church because they want to sing in the choir. People join church because it's, it's just a religious thing to do. Because y'all know First Baptist Church of not is the church to be at now. That's the place to be. One of the churches to be at. But just joining the church won't do it. Some of you join church because your significant other or your, who you trying to marry want you to join church. Ain't none of that going to get you into heaven. That doesn't make you a brand new person. Jesus said right here in John 3, this is one of the most significant passages in all the scripture. He says you have to be born again. Uh, verse number, let me read verse 6 again. That which is born of the flesh, verse 6. Let me put that up there again. But that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. You must have a new birth experience. Now the question is, how do I get that experience? How, what do I have to go through to get to the place of having a born again experience? What is the process? I'm glad you asked the question. Because that's what I want to talk about today. I want to, I'm, I want to take you down the road to get there. What's the road to get saved? What's the road to get born again? We call it Romans' road to salvation. Matter of fact, turn to the book of Romans, and I'm going to give you five scriptures, and I'm going to be finished. Make sure that you have walked these five scriptures, that you understand these five scriptures, that you've embraced these five scriptures. And here's the, from Romans chapter 3 is the first one. Because the first, the first thing you have to recognize is the problem. Here's my first point, that there's a problem. Somebody say, Houston, we have a problem. Yeah. Is Romans 3, chapter 3, verse 23. And here's what it says, Romans 3, 23. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That's the problem. I'm giving a tag to these points. That's the first point that all have sinned. We are all sinners. You're born a sinner. You're born with a sin nature. We've all sinned, and here's what the scripture says, and we have fallen short of the standard that God has. We've fallen short, and you got to evaluate yourself to understand this. The very first step in the process of getting born again is an acknowledgement that you are a jacked up joker. 
that you tore up from the flow up, that you have sinned, that we have sinned and fallen short. We've missed the mark. We have, we have fallen short of the standard that God requires. And we've all done that. We've all, we're born sinners. You're born in sin. You ain't got to do nothing, just be born. You come in the world sinning. Have you ever noticed when a child is growing up, you don't have to teach him how to lie? And guess what? And they don't have to teach, you don't have to teach them because they don't watch their parents lie so much. I feel tension in the room. For all have sinned and falling short of the glory of God, you must come. The beginning of the journey is the acknowledgement that you know that you deserve, that you haven't lived, you haven't met God's standard. Let's go to chapter six. Uh, yeah, that's 323. Let's go to chapter six. And that brings us to the penalty of the problem. Somebody say, here's point two, there's a penalty. And the penalty of the problem is that we all deserve death. 623, chapter 6, verse 23 says, for, for the wages of sin is death. Y'all see that? For the wages of sin is death. Stick a pen right there. The wage, the pay, the reward, the compensation of your sin nature and your sin behavior is death. Now that word death is interesting because it doesn't mean that you die because y'all are sinners and you're still here. That word death means to be separated from God. How many of y'all know there's some people who are alive but they dead? They're living but they have no life. They don't have the life that God has to offer. It means to be separated from a holy God. That's what death means. The wages, the compensation, the reward is to be separated from the life that God has to offer. That's the penalty. That's, that's the reward, the compensation. The wages of sin is death, to be separated from God. That's the penalty. But guess what? The great news also in verse 23 of chapter 6 is a provision. Ooh. God has made a provision. Somebody say provision. And what's the provision? The provision is what Jesus did for us on the cross. And let me read verse 23b. This is the letter part b of this verse. It says the wages of sin is death. But then it says, but the gift of God is eternal life Hallelujah. in Christ Jesus our Lord. Right. Let's break this down. But the gift, let me start off by giving you this word gift. It's a gift. It's free. It doesn't cost anything. You can't earn it. You can't buy it. You don't pay anything for it. It's a gift from God. God gives it to us, give it to us free. He's made it available to you for free. You don't pay for it. You don't buy it. You don't earn it. It's a gift, the gift of God. I love this verse right here. The gift of God, what is it? It's life. No, no, that's not right. It's eternal life. Look, it's life, listen, it's life that will last for eternity. Once he gives it to you, it will last for eternity. And that's great news. It's eternal. It, 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 you, you can't lose it. You, it doesn't fade. It doesn't walk away. It's eternal. It's, eter it's life with God. It's, it's the ability to have a vibrant life with God that will last eternity. eternity. Now, now, listen, I'm almost finished. So, thank two people said, take your time. <laughs> the gift of God is eternal life. And look, look what it says. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Now what's significant about that? There's only one way to get life eternal. And that's through Jesus Christ. Now I know a lot of people say there's a lot of roads to heaven. And that's not true. 
I know a lot of people believe that. Y'all can believe it if you want to. I'm telling you, I ain't going to take the chance to think there's a whole lot of different roads. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes unto the Father except through me. That's what Jesus said. You don't get there through Muhammad. You don't get there through Buddha. You don't get there through Hinduism. You don't get there through Hare Krishna. You don't get there through transcendental meditation. You don't go on down all the list of names you want. There's only one way to get to, etern- to get eternal life, and his name is Jesus Christ. And the question is, what have you done with him? What have you done with him? What, what have you said about him? What have you believed about him? How have you responded to him? If you've ignored him, you're in trouble, Doc. You're in, you in big trouble. If you haven't surrendered your life, if you have not accepted him in your life, at some point in my journey, I recognized that there was something missing in my life. At some point in my life, even though I was a member of the choir, I sang in the sunbeams, I was in the United Voices, I was an usher at the First Baptist Church of Glen Arden, I was active in church, but at some point in my journey, I realized there was something missing. Yes, sir. And one Tuesday night, I made a decision that I wanted a change in my life. Yeah. And I'm so grateful that God made provisions for me. And made, he, made, he made provisions for me to get in the right place, to get in the right relationship. Somebody say, thank God for the provision that he made. And, and that provision is fulfilled with a promise. Chapter 10, here's my fourth and final point, is this promise. There's a promise that he made. Now I want y'all to learn these Ps. I want you to know about the, the problem the penalty, the provision, and verse chapter 10 gives us the promise, and I'm finished. Chapter 10, verse 9 says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. If you confess with your mouth, leave that up there for a second. If you confess with your mouth, notice what it says, the Lord Jesus. See, some of y'all want the the Savior Jesus. What's the difference between the Lord Jesus and the Savior Jesus? The Savior Jesus means you want somebody just to save you from hell. The Lord Jesus means you've, you've yielded to him being in charge of your life. Ooh, I am preaching up in here whether y'all know it or not. Somebody about to get their life turned around up in here today. Somebody's about to get saved today. Somebody is recognizing that he's not been the Lord of my life. He has not been in charge of my life. I have not surrendered. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, What does that mean? That means if you believe God raised him from the dead, it means that you had to also believe that he died. And how did he die? He died on the cross. He was wounded for our transgressions. He took the punishment. He took the whipping that you should have gotten. He took the pain. It should have been you hanging on that cross. It should have been you and I hanging on that cross. It should have been you getting whipped. It should have been you with the crown of thorns on your head. It should have been you getting those 39 lashes. But he took our place. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. That God got him up out of the grave if you believe that. And then it says this, and I love this right here, you will be saved. That's the road. That's the path. And you know, it's, it's that simple. It's that basic that people's lives and hearts have been changed 
by them doing just this right here, verse 9. Confess with their mouth and believe in their heart that God raised him from the dead. That means you believe he died on the cross, he was buried, and early on Sunday he got up out of the grave. Amen. And if you believe it, you will be saved. God will transform you. And guess what? Look, look can you jot down verse 13, I'm, and I'm finished. Verse 13 says, for whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall, shall be saved. Call on his name. Call on the name of Jesus. Doesn't matter how low you have fallen, how long you've been falling, how deep you've been falling, how recent you, you've fallen. It doesn't matter what you've done, when you did it, who you did it with, how long you did it. When you call on the name of Jesus, you will be, you shall be saved. Now, that's the road to salvation. I have just taken you through the path of what we teach every altar counselor person. Now, don't you go around telling people you are altar counselor certified. You know? We want you to know a little bit more than that. But that's what we take you through. I've just walked you through it today. Now, somebody here today needs to take that journey. Somebody here today right now knows, recognize I've never accepted Jesus. I've been a religious person. I've never been born again. You can get born again today. Just get out of your seat and make your way here right now, right quick. Don't put it off. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be ashamed. Nobody's looking down their nose at you. We're going to shout and give God the glory and give him the praise. Just make your way down here and say, you know what? I want to get right. I want to get saved. I want to be born again. Come on right now. This is the moment and the time and the day. That's right. Come on. This is the day. This is it. This is the day. I'm so proud of you. I don't want y'all to sing today. I'm sorry. I, I want people to just think about this. I just, I want them to ponder this. I, I appreciate y'all doing a great job, but I just want the word of God to sink in people's hearts today and to get right with God. Come on, just make your way out. Don't be ashamed. Don't be embarrassed. Nothing to be embarrassed about. Just come on, come, come, come. That's right. Come on, come on, come on. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you. So proud of you. Somebody else, come right now, right this moment, right this instant. You're not saved. They, I see you. Come on. Amen. So proud of you. I'm so proud of you. Step right there. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Excellent. Praise the Lord. Excellent. 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 I see you. I see you. I see you. Glory. Glory. Amen. 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 I'm so proud of you, Steve. So proud of you. So proud of you. So proud of you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Excellent. Excellent. So proud of you. So proud of you, bro. Amen. 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 This is the day. This is the day. This is the time. This is the moment. Maybe you are backslid and you need to rededicate yourself. Come on right now. Right now is the time. Come on right now. Maybe you're not sure. Maybe you're not sure. You need assurance. Come on right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. This the day, this the moment, this the time. So proud of you, so thank you. So proud of you, praise the Lord. Hey, bro, so proud of you, man, so proud of you. Praise the Lord. Amen, so proud of you, amen, come on, amen. Praise God, praise God, praise the Lord. Wonderful, wonderful. Maybe you're already saved, maybe you're already saved, but you want to join this church. Right now will be the time to come as well. Come on, right now. I'm proud of you. Amen. Unsaved, backslidden, unsure, or you need a church home, right now is the time. I'm so proud of you. Praise the Lord. Anybody else? Amen. Talk to the person next to you. Say, just go ahead. Say, if you're afraid, I'll walk down there with you. You don't have to be ashamed. Come on. Come on. I'll be your partner. 
unsaved, backslidden, unsure, or you want to join our church. This is the day. Praise Him. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Amen. Praise him. Praise him. Praise. Praise our God. Mm -hmm. How you doing? So proud of you. Hey, buddy. So proud of you. So proud of you. God bless you. Can I wait one more minute for somebody else who's toiling and wrestling and God spared your life. God spared your life. You should have been dead. You should have lost your life. But he spared your life. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm so proud of y'all person behind you is the council. They're going to take you to the back and minister to you. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I thank you for every person today. Make them brand new creation based on the promises of your word for unsaved. Plant those. Plant each of them, Father. I pray for those who are unsure. Give them assurance. I'm praying for the backslider that they rededicate their hearts to you. I'm praying, Father, for the person that's unsure. Give them assurance. I'm praying for people already believers. Plant them in the vineyard and use them for your glory and honor. In the matchless and wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a shout for these souls here today. Praise God. Wonderful Jesus.